Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Hi. Hello. Excited to get this party started. Um, well, because we don't have too much time, I figured we can just kind of jump into things and uh, we're excited all to be here today. So before we dive into the session, which is living with a rare disease as a young adult, I just want to share a little bit about myself, as well as our two amazing uh, speakers today. So for those that don't know me, my name is Seth Rotberg. I am a fellow patient advocate uh, who has been involved in the community for, I think, over 10 years now, uh, doing a lot of work, fundraising, volunteering, sharing my story to really make a difference. I live with, di with a different rare disease called Huntington's disease, but I'm also the co-founder and board president of the nonprofit Our Odyssey, which was created in 2019 after uh, after years of just trying to search for empowerment, inclusivity, belonging, connection, and hope. And we're a nonprofit that provides year-round social emotional support to young adults, mainly 18 to 35. We're a little bit lenient on the older side, but providing year-round support for young adults impacted by a rare chronic community. Uh, really providing a uh, space for young adults to connect, learn, and build a network uh, with others who just simply understand what they're going through. And so during this session, um, I'm actually not going to be doing much of the talking. We're going to be hearing from uh, our, our two other speakers who are not only uh, two great volunteers for our Odyssey, but they're also two fellow young adults from the EDS community. And so they're going to share a little bit about their personal experiences what it's like being a young adult impacted uh, by a rare disease. And we'll just kind of jump into it. But um, before that, I will share a little bit about them. Um, so bear with me because I just, I know them personally, but also want to highlight some of the great work that they're doing as, as Marcel and Emily are like, oh boy, what is he going to say? Uh, I, I promise it'll be all good. But uh, Marcel, so she is a, biomedical engineer and a devoted entrepreneur. Uh, she's passionate. She's a passionate advocate for young adults with chronic conditions and disabilities because Marcel's one of those young people. Uh, she lives with many different health conditions. We always joke in our meetups that she's an overachiever because she has so many, but one of them is uh, hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Uh, she also has created the chronically surviving advocacy blog where she shares expert ex she shares more about her life uh, and where other fellow young adults like her feel open to share their stories too. Um, Marcel, what is the second part of your business? So I don't butcher the name. <laughs> it's, it's a sense of my yoga or a sense of my healing. Yeah. Awesome. And so this second part, I, I appreciate it. Uh, but the second part is where she offers mindfulness and wellness services geared for those with chronic health conditions. And then Emily is a young mother living also with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and a few other health conditions. Her family is also just rare in a sense that her partner, Carmi, and their beautiful daughter also live with a rare disease. Uh, so she has faced many difficult situations that has led to her dedication to destigmatize the, uh, the nu nuances of living with rare conditions, especially you know, the road to diagnosis. Um, so she's very determined advocate to really make a difference in the community and really not just share her own story, but help share the stories of others through education, work, volunteering, and many other aspects of her involvement in the healthcare space. Um, so that is a little bit about them. I could probably talk the whole time about just their story and the amazing work that they're doing, but we're not here for that. So um, without further ado, I'm the, the hope for this is kind of to ask questions to them for them to just share a little bit more about themselves. So the first one is just asking, can you briefly share a bit about your, your health odyssey? Thank you, Seth. Um, yeah. Um, so as a child, I always felt different. I just really felt like I couldn't keep up with the other kids. I told myself I just didn't have the energy um, and no one really knew what was wrong or that anything was wrong. Um, I think including myself, um, I just thought a lot of the things that I was going through was normal. 
um, like learning to put my dislocated joints back into place um, if it wasn't too serious and realize that that wasn't a normal thing. Um, so, and, and because like I've been dealing with a lot of pain with for my whole life. So it's amazing what you can get used to and I'm pretty good at hiding it. So it took a while to get diagnosed. I got diagnosed with hypermobile EDS or hypermobile spectrum disorder. They don't know yet um at the age of 29 which was only a couple of years ago um I also like I said that I also have a laundry list of other comorbidities um two of the main ones being uh familial Mediterranean fever and narcolepsy type one and um at the age of 26 I had to stop working because I just couldn't do it anymore um it was all my symptoms were getting way too intense and that was a struggle um and to be honest, I've, I've never been able to return to full-time work ever since, um, which is why I'm an entrepreneur and can set my own hours. Um, and I've graduated from one mobility aid to the next, which at first was a lot harder. Um, so from a cane to a walker, shower chairs, all that. And now I have a beautiful Pebble or wheelchair called Pebble. And honestly, she's the best thing that ever happened to me um and so ever since I've been into this world I've had like 20 I've seen like over 30 different specialists um had more than a dozen diagnoses and I've tried at least 40 different types of treatments and procedures and there is still so much yet that I have we all get to know from me um just because I'm still partially undiagnosed um but I've been able to weave and create this beautiful life in the in-between and that's what matters. Thank you, Marcel, for sharing a little bit about your story and, you know, your kind of journey of figuring out, you know, how you were able to discover, you know, this health condition, but then also how it doesn't define who you are, right. And how important it is um, for you to kind of do more than just, you know, what your health condition entails. Um, Emily, do you want to share a little bit and, and add on to kind of what Marcel said and maybe share your your health odyssey? Yeah, I know we're, we're tight on time. So um, my story is so much similar to Marcel's. Even the ages and uh, diagnoses, uh, there's really only a couple of differences. Um, I had to stop working around the same age, full time. I had to go through many of the same diagnostic odysseys as she did and still continue to do so. It is every day, one day at a time with figuring out these kind of things. And, um, you know, I just look forward to, you know, just learning more and sharing from, you know, my experience and her experience. That's what's so great about um, meeting, you know, each other through these situations. Yes. I mean, it's, it's so important where who would have thought that the three of us would be speaking at a conference like this, but we were able to find one another through, through support. Um, speaking of support, I guess, Emily and Marceau, as young adults, where do you turn to identify that support? And Emily, maybe you want to start us off? Yeah. Going into what I was saying that, you know, surrounding people, yourself with people that just get it in the situation, like uh, we were just saying, and just having uh, these kind of support situations like groups, support groups, um, and through either social media, lots of different options through that, um, at least how I got connected with this. Um, therapy has been such a great uh, journey. I mean, I don't even mean sometimes straight therapy, just somebody to talk to that has some sort of professional experience, even if they're a student in school, which accessibility has been a problem for me with insurance. So I've been working with a psychology student. Um, so, you know, those kind of things. And another thing as far as spirituality, that uh, all sorts of different things have been really helpful uh, through all of these situations that I've had to go through and come to find for many others that just connecting in so many different ways and just seeing things outside uh, different perspectives and 
having a, a mindfulness about it is um, having this intention of going through all those things that I said and, and finding ways to just um, better empower yourself to just enjoy and, and live your life more fully because I think that we missed out on a lot of that stuff just given nature of our situations. Marcel, anything you want to you want to add to that? Um, yeah, I do. <laughs> um, there's a question that came through through, through the, um, the chat, uh, which was just dealing with their health and feels like a full time job and it leads you to being at war with yourself, you know, trying to keep up with normal people and and losing most of your self care. Um, routines what and the question is what are good ways to cope with men, with that men, men, mentally and without comparing um I hope I'm asked that's the right question um and I think this answer like this question answers it right like it's just finding people that are able to support you um people who get it it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be in a in the EDS community if they are then all, that's awesome but there I have a lot of people in my life now that aren't chronically ill that get it and and try really hard to get it um and our odyssey is like a great way for me to kind of come to that realization that there are a lot of other people out there that care and that want to support you um so I think that that's one thing dealing with the grief because what it is it's grief like I had so many dreams and I'm sure all of a lot of us had a lot of dreams that we can't accomplish anymore and and that's grief and and that needs to be addressed and we shouldn't feel like we need to keep up or push it aside we should address it and look at it and let ourselves feel it um and realize that it's a process right like some days I'm flying high and I'm productive and everything's awesome but then when I have a flare-up I'm like I not productive enough I'm a failure all of those things and just being okay with that and allowing yourself to have those fluctuations is super important um and taking it one day at a time like Emily said um so yeah I think that it's important to not push it aside don't fake it till you make it it doesn't work for us <laughs> um and just be very truthful and authentic with yourself yeah awesome and that kind of leads to the, the the next question for the both of you I mean you know, you, you both have been attending some of uh, our odysseys or some, a lot of our odysseys virtual meetups, which is amazing. And maybe you can share, you know, real quick, what, what, like, how do you came across our odyssey and, and like, what makes you come back? Cause as, as you mentioned, Marcel, you know, you feel like you've been able to connect with people outside dollars down loans community who also might be living with a a rare or chronic condition. And Emily, I would, I would say you've done the same just from what I've seen on through social media. And so maybe you both can share about briefly, you know, how you came across our odyssey and, and what makes you uh, continue to come back and either, either or can start this time. I'll let you guys flip a coin. <laughs> I'll just talk briefly. Um, and for me, I just found you guys I was reading a Nord newsletter saw it. it was the beginning of the pandemic I had was aware of you guys before but you know never really went to a meetup or anything um ended up so I'm like yeah you know what it's a pandemic I'm isolated let me just check it out and I pretty much been to more meetups than not I think uh, I can probably count on my two hands how many of the ones that I've missed uh and it it was just random chance I guess that it was synchronicity um, why do I keep coming back? Because it's hard to explain why I keep coming back. It's hard to explain the feeling that you get at the meetups. I think you, those who have gone understand. Um, it's just like a really fuzzy feeling and you just feel like you're being hugged by your grandma that you haven't seen in like three years. Um, so yeah, go ahead, Emily. You put that so beautifully. I don't know if I can even add to that. Um, I saw the, our Odyssey information through an ad that the EDS Society was running late last spring. And they were running an ad about upcoming meetups as well that they were having. And so I thought, oh, I'll, maybe I'll check it out. And I think because I have anxiety, like so many 
of us do is EDS. I think that I was just not really interested in just checking it out. But once I did, I realized, wow, these are all my people. Like they get it. I can just hang out here. And if, you know, like you see me leaning on my, on my hand right now, like they get it. I mean, you all hear it even understand. So it's, it's one of those situations where, you know, it's like trying a new favorite food and you're like, oh, I, I don't want to not have that again. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, and I appreciate, you know, that you both continue to come back and enjoying us and many other young adults, because I think what's interesting, what I've seen, right, is that people attend and they're kind of like, okay, I'm going to kind of be in the background. I may not share as much at first. And I felt like with the both of you, you did share, but I feel like as you continue to get more comfortable right now, you're like what I would say more leadership type roles where you're helping encouraging others to share their story. And so it's great to see that. And I think it's an important message for many people here is saying, you don't need to find something and feel like you have to share everything that first time you meet someone, right. You know, take time and eventually it could turn into other leadership opportunities where you're going from like being behind the scenes to then kind of leading these and taking initiative. So I do appreciate both of you continuing to come back. Um, last thing, and I know this, you know, I want to do, be, be mindful of, of the time, but maybe, you know, Marcel and Emily share like what advice, um, what advice do you have for young adults who are newly diagnosed with EDS? Thanks, Seth. Um, and I like that you made a really nice, polite way of saying that me and Emily talk a lot at meetups. Uh, I'm just joking. Um, but honestly, the, one of the biggest advice that I wish I would have told myself was just trust yourself. You know your body best. Um, you've been in your body with your body from the beginning. So just really have a lot of faith in your body. Um, find doctors that care and that you can trust and sometimes that's easier said than done um and if you haven't found people who get it keep searching because they're out there and it could be literally random chance like looking reading a, a or a newsletter and then coming to a whole different you know life a few a year later um i would also say educate yourself um as a biomedical engineer i do have a little bit of a of a medical background. So for me, it, 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 it came a little bit more easily to, you know, look at research and see what's out there. But that doesn't mean that if you don't have the, you know, the educational background that you can't do it, you can do totally do it. So just do whatever you as much as you can. Um, and learn to have strong boundaries, you know, like in every aspect of life. Um, I know maybe spoon theory is probably overused in our community, but it, it's important, right? And, and you know, back to the question that was asked earlier, like, you know, you're losing most of your self-care. Well, we, you know, maybe learn to prioritize your self-care. And that's not easy. It's not easy in this fast, 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 fast world, right? And, um, and so just value that, that that time for yourself to create a quality of life that's meaningful for you. And another thing is, and I've learned this through our Odyssey meetings like recently, learn to explain your symptoms at like a fifth grade level. You know, we always talk like hypermobile EDS, vascular EDS, but like, you know, we never talk about, yo, my joints are super bendy and I dislocate a finger when I'm taking a nap. You know, like it's it, learn to do that. That's what I would say. Um, I thought I, it, for me, it's been really fun to try to challenge myself to explain it with less medical terms and more layman's terms. Couldn't agree more. And uh, definitely it's tough, right. To be like, try to break it down, especially it's like when you're talking to someone new. Um, but Emily, what about you? What type of advice would you provide a fellow young adult who just learned about their EDS diagnosis? Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly with Marcel on everything that she's saying, um, that we do know our bodies best, but sometimes it's hard to explain exactly what's hurting, what conditions causing what, and sometimes just kind of explain it as if you would explain it to your, your neighbor's kid or something <laughs> like, oh yeah, well, I know I can't play 
soccer with you or whatever is the situation. Who knows? I mean, explaining things to kids sometimes is easier in some ways because they are just uh, more open-minded in many ways. They don't have the same uh, biases from society and uh, or not necessarily. So uh, in a nutshell, right? <laughs> but uh, with that being said, just keep surrounding yourself with those kind of people that, that can understand like once they kind of learn and get it, um, that they can, you know, help learn to respect us and our needs as much as we learn how to respect ourselves too, because that's such a big, important part of it is the ableism and internalized ableism aspect of how, just kind of what we talked about earlier about how we view ourselves and not, um, how we're kind of hard on ourselves about trying to keep up with this world and, um, and that we're on our own we're on our own timeline now and, and that it, and that's perfectly okay. Everyone's on their own timeline anyways. So, uh, <laughs> and sometimes we forget those little, you know, simple things and, and, and it can be really hard dealing with the people that aren't as supportive. And it doesn't mean that your experience is any less valid. Um, some people, uh, they just don't know how to help support people with complex medical conditions like ours and some of the things that we have to face. And sometimes they're just unwilling to learn. They might have whatever is going on on their plate um, to deal with, and maybe they're just not getting the support they need. So they can't really you know, give back what they're not getting either. Because of their, sometimes people just don't have room for that. And, and that's okay. And it's, it's perfectly okay because boundaries are important on both sides of it. So, you know, and you don't feel like you have to over explain yourself either, because that sometimes happens naturally with this stuff, like feeling, um, wanting to be heard and listen to the situations of whatever is going on. And, you know, you just have to do your best and when dealing with all different types of people, especially the ones that are less supportive and, and just continue to surround yourself with more people that are capable and willing to help. And, and sometimes in our situations, we don't really know how to ask for help or don't want to ask for help or feel, I don't know, kind of burdened by our own helping asking things. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I think a lot of you probably get it. It's like, it's all wrapped up into one. Like we're, we're finding the fine line, and the balance of all of that um, to feel independent um, and, and also feel uh, comfortable and empowered at the same same time when receiving help. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes somebody's just a click or a call away and that can give you a piece of mind or comfort you need in the moment, just something like that. Absolutely. And I'm seeing all, all these questions coming in. Um, I I'm sure we could probably go another like 30 minutes if, if we had the time to just kind of go over the questions. But, um, you know, a few things that I will say is that if you want to, uh, you know, follow up with us, um, feel free to, well, I will say for on, on my behalf, feel free to reach out to myself. I don't want to speak for the other two, um, but it looks like they're giving a thumbs up. Um, if it's easier just for gener generating questions, I'm going to put in the chat just the generic our Odyssey email, and that way I can pass it along to Marcel and Emily um, so that that way they can answer you guys directly. So it's just info at our odyssey.org. I will say real quick, I saw someone ask, can you explain what Odyssey is? Is it a social media site? Am I spelling it correctly? You did spell it correctly. Uh, it is our Odyssey. And the reason for that was because of the idea of an Odyssey is a journey and it's not mine. It's not yours. It's ours. We're doing it together. Um, it's a nonprofit organization. We've been around for only two years, so we're still, you know, growing, um, but it's been great and it's been an amazing uh, journey to just really connect young adults and, and seeing that we want to provide year round support to young adults to provide that sense of belonging, provide that connection and try to decrease that isolation. Um, so with that being said, I just want to, you know, thank everyone for allowing us to be here. Um, I know we'll be back in a bit for a, I think uh, a Q and a part. And with that being said, just, Thank you all again. And Emily and Marcel continue to advocate and keep up the great work in the community. Thanks, Ed, and thanks everyone for coming to our session.